concept that we have not accorded it its rightful place. Contrary to the popular view, it can be shown and conclusively proved that that structure, that has an internal structure of incredible order and beautiful order, it's filled with electromagnetic waves going in, in bi-directions. Pick a frequency, there's a wave going in one direction and a wave in the other direction. The wave that's going backwards is an anti-wave. It's a, it's a time-reversed wave. And the vacuum is structured. This potential, a vacuum is just potential is all it is. Uh, this potential is filled with a harmonic series of these waves. And so it structures spatially by bidirectional wave sets, and it structures vertically in terms of harmonics. Now, if you then invoke this structure, and you do that with a nonlinear material, and you put in one wave in the nonlinear material, that material will take from the vacuum that excess structure because it turns everything into a potential, and it will put out multiple frequencies and harmonics. That's what nonlinear materials do. Interestingly enough, if you take time-reversed waves and put in those harmonics, when they back up through, they will restore one wave. You can gather the energy and collect it and integrate it together and produce a single thing of much greater energy and lower frequency. And so what you have is the vacuum structures in frequency and spatially and the connection are waves. And by the way, these waves do not have to move at the speed of light. They can have much greater velocity. Now, the importance of Whitaker's work is that he showed that if you were to take sets of waves that you made on the bench, you made a wave and it's anti-wave, and you made the harmonic and it's anti-harmonic, you'd have to have at least one interval, one interval. In music, we would call that an octave, you know, from C to the next C, for example. If you had at least one octave or one harmonic interval, you would then have a structured vacuum. Now, you can build such sets as these any way you wish to, and each one of those sets is a special form that you can build on the laboratory bench. There is a set, for example, that contains the electromagnetic parts that generate typhoid. That's Kosnashev's work, and that's Kosnashev's death photons that have been shown to carry death and disease. That work has been duplicated in West Germany, or Germany now, and also has been duplicated in Australia and here in the U.S. It also explains the work of Antoine Priori, who built a machine under the proper scientific auspices and under rigorous testing on lab animals, which cured cancer and leukemia almost 100%. Some eminent French scientists worked with him. It's still in the French medical literature. It was real. It existed. It was squelched. But what I'm saying is, if you use the Whitaker approach, you can now, for the first time, understand how Priori's device worked, because that's what it did. And he used a rotating plasma to make his phase conjugates. We didn't even know about the phase conjugate in those days. Today, we know that one of the things plasmas do, do under the right circumstances is phase conjugate, or time reverse. And he showed that you can cure cancer, leukemia. You could just as easily set a pattern that would cure AIDS. Uh, he showed you could clean out clogged arteries. Um, you could uh, change the immune system, increase the immune system, bring it back up, which would be very valuable to AIDS patients, for example. For every disease, there is a pattern which causes the disease in this structure. For the cure to every disease, you simply take its pattern and time reverse it, and you get the precise electromagnetic antidote. You then put that inside a potential, as Whitaker showed how to do, and you treat the body with that, which is like very, you know, like normal electromagnetic radiation. It's not ionizing radiation. It's not nuclear radiation. Expose them to a rippling magnetic field, for example, with these embedded in the field. And you cure the disease. And that's the kind of medical treatment we ought to have, not this cut them and burn them and poison them type thing that we have now. And many of them are still dying with cancer and leukemia and AIDS. It would take about three years you take a team of about 30-something people, facilities and so forth, in about three years, about $20 million a year to deliver the ability to do that kind of electromagnetic treatment. Our knowledge 